Kurt Martinez, welcome to AGU TV. Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about how Earth sensing systems have changed. Over time, um, it's been possible due to the miniaturization of electronics uh, for people to have sensing systems which are uh, much smaller and lighter and can communicate so much more easily than before. So it's, it's giving people the capability to go to more remote places with more equipment, take more readings from newer places. Yeah, and what, tell me a little bit about why this was important. Like, what obstacles were scientists running into? So one of the classic obstacles was um, having to carry some equipment for many kilometers, place it, um, set it up, and then leave it there for a year, so, or visit it a few times to get the data. So you never really knew if it was working, and you could come back and discover it was really just dead for six months. Uh, so with the newer systems, you can get the data every day. So not only do you get the excitement of getting your data frequently, but uh, you know if the system needs some ex extra work to get it back to fixed. Tell me a little bit about the, the systems that you have created in terms of like, you know, how are they extending battery power, or how are you making sure that they don't run into the same pitfalls that some mm -hmm. of these other systems at, were? Yeah, so over the years we've developed systems which use much, much less power, so they can have a very small battery, be lighter, have a small solar panel, um, and uh, carry on doing the measurements on their own, and also be slightly sensitive to things. So when they run, run out of power, they might take fewer measurements or communicate less and so on. So it really gives people the ability to know the thing will work uh, without having to carry lots and lots of batteries or have huge systems to generate power. Yeah, and I would imagine that this is great information to be sharing openly at a place like AGU with all these scientists here, all of them needing to take measurements and... Yes, uh, much like people use computing for all their science, um, a lot of people use sensors and instrumentation, and all of those things need power, and a lot of them need networking so that you get the data back. So it's a common problem with common solutions, which is great. And you work with glaciologists, but I would imagine that this will work. This is, these technologies will be valuable to scientists across the board. Yes, that's right. So although we're measuring, we're basically putting something a bit like an animal tracker, but on a glacier so we can see its movement precisely, um, these technologies allow people to take measurements uh, uh, for forestry type uh, things, volcanoes where it's very dangerous to go near it, uh, places where you would, n you would need some kind of special equipment uh, to do your measurements in many places and get the data back live. Do you see anything coming in the next five to 10 years that has you pretty excited about where you can go next with this? There are some very interesting communication technologies that are, are emerging. For example, nanosatellites, which allow people to send data from anywhere in the planet with a reasonable cost, um, but also being able to leave the sensor to make its own decisions and do some machine learning type approaches, which sounds strange, but uh, for example, if you're capturing a lot of video, you don't really necessarily want to send it all home you just want it to find the interesting parts for you, and that kind of thing is now possible on a tiny, tiny chip. Great. Kirk Martinez, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure.